Hello fellow Nuke artists and welcome back to another Nuke tutorial. So today we'll be looking at EXR sequences, working with the multiple channels that can be stored within. We're going to be breaking out the different render passes, working with them, bringing it back together, and then creating a very simple 3D scene just to add some motion, some camera animation, and some shake to everything. Alright, so uh, let's get to it. So if you head over to actionvfx.com, you can see that we have a collection of aerial explosions. You know, we have a range of different shapes and, you know, variation in these explosions right here. And if you click on them, you can see the details uh, of uh, the files that you can download. You know, we have the different formats here, OpenEXR and ProRes up to 4K. And you can get an overview of the render passes here. You know, we have an RGB pass, volume light, and then an other pass, which is the fire and smoke combined. First off, let's talk a little bit about EXR. So I'm going to bring in our aerial explosion here. And... EXR files, if you don't know, they can contain much more data than regular file types like JPEGs and PNGs. Uh, with EXR you can store multiple channels, like render passes. For example, here we have our lighting information in three different passes. And uh, this gives us much more control over which of these different sides to highlight. So if we have a very distinct uh, light source from from one side we can highlight this edge and make the other light passes a little bit you know darker in color so we can use these channels to composite our assets uh, depending on which background or which environment we want them in so for this one I'm just gonna bring in uh, a photo here uh, from some clouds high above in the sky we have our Sun coming from the left here and it's hitting the left side of these clouds so we want to replicate that, you know, make make the same thing happen with this explosion right here. So I'm going to show you how to break out these channels uh, and use them in your compositing flow. So we're going to be using uh, something called a shuffle node. Uh, and that basically brings out the channels you want and you can put them in whatever channel you want them to be in, really. So I'm going to shuffle these into the RGBA channel. I'm going to start off with the background light coming from the, the rear here. So, and after this shuffle node, you can just add whatever color correcting nodes you need. I'm just gonna boost this up so we get a nice highlight here. Like that. And I'm gonna copy shuffle node, and I'm gonna bring in our next light. It's gonna be the frontal light here. So, and this one we can, you know, dim down a little bit if you want it. Uh, we can always just come back to these color correct nodes and adjust it. It's going to start merging these two now. Like so. So, as you can see now, we're starting to get that nice highlight there while the rest of the, the smoke is a little bit darker. So, we can bring in our final side here now. And that is the RO. And this one we can, you know, tweak as we go. So now we've got some uh, nice bounces coming from the side. And you can always just, you know, even add some color to it. Say you, you're getting some bounces, some blue bounces from the side here. You can just go back and tweak all these individual sides here. Like that. So let's see how this looks over our photo. Just going to bring in another merge node here, and we need um, we need to get the alpha channel correctly here. So now we've just been shuffling these channels that we wanted. So we're not getting the the correct alpha channel from the original this one. So we're just going to use a copy node for that and copy the alpha channel from this onto this. So now we have the correct alpha channel here. I'm going to change this input. So now when we reformat this, we're going to see our cloud in there. Like so. So since the sun is coming from the left here, we need to just mirror this cloud so it's correct. I'm just going to use a transform node here and do a minus one here. Like so. Now it's starting to look a little bit more correct. 
So from here on, we can add some of the explosion elements. You know, we have a channel called volumetrics, and it contains the actual explosion, the fire elements. So let's just shuffle that in now and add a color correct node for for later use. <laughs> and I'm just going to use a another merge node here. So now we have our lights, our three lights in a different merge node here, and we're going to have an explosion in a new merge node. So now you can just control the intensity of this explosion here with this slider. You know, we have much more control now. You can always just animate this over time too if you need. Uh, so you can just go and adjust these, you know, you can just adjust the colors if you want it more, more saturated or less saturated, you know, you can do a lot here. So it's starting to look better. We need to bump up the highlights a little bit more. So, and uh, if you want, you can just add some labels here so it's easier to see. All right, so let's bump up the highlights so it's standing out a little bit more. You know, considering the there's a lot of sunlight hitting this right now from that side. And we can bump up the bounces here. Like so. Let's see what other channels we have here. Uh, we have a, a combination of the, the smoke and the, f uh, the fire, and it's in the other pass. And this we can use to add a little bit more detail in this. So I'm just going to desaturate it so it's just black and white. And I'm going to invert it. And this we can multiply on top of our result. Now we get a little bit more grit in there. You know, we have some more black smoke. And we, this as well, we can just adjust, you know, tone it down a little bit if it's too much. So, I mean, this is just an example of a workflow, you know, breaking out the layers individually, adjusting them, and then bringing it back together. So let's say we're happy with this and we want to bring in some motion in this shot. Uh, I'll just create a very simple 3D scene here. So I'm going to be using some cards here. So, you know, I want to have a card representing the z-axis, the depth here, and then just another card for the background here. So I'm going to use a project 3D node for that. And let's create a camera. And we're going to be projecting this background here. And it's going to be projected onto this card right here. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to scale it up. So let's just duplicate this card and create our depth axis now. I'm just going to rotate it almost 90 degrees and scale it up so we have a little bit more to go with. And I want to get rid of that extra little little part of the card there. So I'm just going to pop this up. Like that. So now we have a very simple 3D scene here. We can now put our explosion in front here and then animate our render camera. So I'm going to duplicate this camera here. Create a new camera. This is going to be the render camera. So we're just going to make it green and pop in a scanline renderer. And then we need a scene for all these cards here. Like so. So let's just toggle off this projection camera so we're not seeing it. And now let's bring in our composited explosion here. I'm going to put a card in. And we're going to bring that into our scene. And let's just place it somewhere around here. 
scale it down. Make sure it's not clipping. And now you can see we have our explosion with our 3D little scene here. So if we animate this camera now, we're going to see some parallaxing. We're going to get some depth in this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and make a keyframe here at frame one. I'm going to make it move it a little bit off, tilt it to the side. Like so. I'm going to worry about these black edges afterwards. I'm just going to make a key from here. And then at frame 200, I'm just going to move the camera to the opposite side and rotate it back. So we're getting the opposite happening now. And so it's going to animate between that, creating a parallax effect. Very simple. Just to get some motion in there. I'm going to put this a little bit more to the right. Okay. There we go. So let's just zoom in a little bit so we're getting rid of those edges. So now we have a pretty, pretty clean shot here. Do move it a little bit more. Just tweaking it now, really that. Okay, no black edges. So now we have our motion in here. And it's going to look look a lot better with some movement. So after this, we can even add a little bit of shake to it, you know, with a camera shake to add some natural, like it's almost handheld or really like it's being filmed from an airplane flying next to this explosion. So to work with a camera shake, I like to first just start off with a checkerboard just to just to see the motion, how it's going, and then just turning off the motion blur so it's a bit quicker. So now we can start to just you know, tweak this, add a little bit of rotation in there, take down the frequency like that. So we have a little bit of a shake now. And just plug that back in. So now we have a uh, our Nice little shake in here. Uh, you can also just bump up the motion blur if you want to have a little bit more of that, you know, fine details. You can also just, you know, pop some green over here. And do some final color adjustments too if you need. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I hope you, you've gotten a little bit more insight into how you can break out these channels and work with them before putting it back together and working with them in a 3D scene. So I really hope this will be useful for you and your future work. It's a brilliant way to work with renders that have multi, multiple channels in it. So I really hope that it can make your process easier. All right, see you soon for the next one. Bye-bye.